All right, my friends, we are at the Virginia Museum of Transportation. I'm visiting my bestie, Jane. Say hi, Jane. And obviously, I saw there was a car museum, so I had to come here. And there's some pretty cool cars. There's some neat, older, American manufacturing vehicles available here. We also have a Detroit Electric, which is gonna be pretty cool. And it's also kind of pertinent because California just put out a uh, mandate that in 2035, it will be all electric vehicles. And a lot of folks think that electric vehicles haven't been around for a while, but they have. So we'll show that. And they also have an EV1 here. So that's like multiple generations of electric vehicles. But let's go ahead and take a look at everything. So behind me, this is pretty neat. This is a 1923 Piedmont touring car. I'll give you a better view of it in a second, but it's pretty cool because it was the only chartered vehicle manufactured in Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia. And kind of cool, they did license it and sell it in a few other places. Uh, Texas, they sold it as the Lone Star and Bush somewhere else and Alize somewhere else. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but kind of interesting. And there's only three in existence. And the fact that you're seeing one right behind me, yeah, that's the kind of thing I really like. Let's take a look at it. lovely 1923 REO Phaeton touring car. Now Ransom Olds had already created Oldsmobile and then he got kicked out which honestly that was a thing like William C. Durant got kicked out of General Motors, Henry Leland got kicked out of was it Lincoln or did he sell Lincoln? Anyways back to back to business. Now so Ransom Olds got kicked out of Oldsmobile and then he started Ario, all right, and now he is also credited to being the first what is stationary assembly line. That's what made the curved dash Oldsmobile, and that's also how he created the car behind me. Let's take a look. Overland, and you're thinking Jeeps, you're thinking utility vehicles, terrain vehicles. What you're not thinking of is this adorable Whippet. Before World War II, before Willis Overland had kind of made the reputation as utility vehicles, they were making these adorable cars. I think this is 1928. Yeah, 1928 Willis Overland Whippet, and, and it was considered one of the fastest cars of the Roaring Twenties. Let's hop on over these little barricades and take a look. I'm allowed to do that, I asked permission, I promise. So he gave me permission to open it. Oh, that's nice. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Oy. Oh, I love this life I live. <gasps> Oy, caramba. Awesome. That's awesome. Look at that. Look at that super minimalistic little cluster gauges, the dash, okay. So 
I feel like we're all pretty familiar with the DeLorean story and John DeLorean's kind of infamous past. And I personally would like to believe that Colin Chapman is out there on a beach sipping a margarita, or he'd probably be having a gin martini, frankly. But it's always kind of cool when you see one, so let's take a look at it. This is, we have a Lincoln Capri right behind me, 1954 Lincoln Capri. And uh, you just feel like the 50s, they were just nailing it with like pleasant names, all right? So you had the Packard Caribbean coming out. I think the last year was like 50, 54, 55. Either way, and also the Cadillac Seville was supposed to be named the St. Moritz. So they were going this whole fun island theme. Let's take a look at this lovely 1954. Lincoln Capri. So it's really fun when you see an automotive design, you know, like that fantastic hood emblem. So how much cars and automobiles design also mimic what's going on in the day? Space travel, flight, This is very interesting and it's very pertinent to what's going on. Just recently in California, they put out a ban of, of gasoline-powered engines by 2035. Now, right, what you see right behind me is a Detroit electric that's over 100 years old. Battery-powered cars are not a new thing. They are not the future. They are the past. They are and were the past. The Detroit electric was mostly... The Detroit Electric was mostly marketed and aiming to be sold to women, up rich women at the time, because they didn't want to do the hand start. So the hand cranking was actually not only tedious, but also quite dangerous. So the beauty of the Detroit Electric vehicle, not only look at that, it's fantastically done, but they didn't have to crank start it. Started right up and it actually got 75 miles, like a range of 75 miles. That's a lot. we have the EV1. Now the EV1, if you have seen the documentary, it's kind of interesting, all right? A lot of discussion and scrutiny around that. But General Motors made this car and they didn't actually sell it. They just put it on a lease program. One of the mass-produced and purpose-driven electric vehicles, battery-powered vehicles. So, and this is where everybody gets a little nuts about it, GM decided, nah, we're not going to go through with this. There's a lot of debate on why that was decided upon. They took all the cars back that they could get and destroyed them. Now, you see this one, there's only 40 left. There's only 40 in existence. You see this one, it has the batteries completely taken out and is owned by Virginia Tech. Kind of interesting, right? We literally, you know, we just looked at the Detroit Electric and we have the EV1 right here. It's fascinating. Don has given me permission to open the door of this EV1. Thank you, Don. Sure. Super nice here. 
Let's see. It might be locked, though. Let's find out. <gasps> it's open. All right. Let me flip this on around. Gosh, it looks pretty... It's actually spacious. Pretty modern, spacious, like they said. I mean, they gave the designers, they wanted the interior to have all the typical creature comforts of a, of a car just powered by batteries. Looks nice. I mean, look at that. <laughs> nice, simple center console. I mean, lots of buttons, but whatever. Cool, cool. So that's interesting. I don't think I'm gonna have another opportunity to open and close and look at the interior of an EV1. I really don't know where else I would see one. Like I, when I saw this on the list of collection for this museum, I was all, oh, that's fascinating. And I saw that there was a Detroit Electric and I was like, well, that's actually positively interesting because those are two major electric vehicles in the history of automotive, so. Pretty cool. Ooh. Oh, this is exciting. I do like a little behind the scenes. Oh, Don, dude, this is a cool old Tucker poster. Have y'all had a Tucker in here before? Man, those are my like. But there used to be a dealer here. Oh, no way. Yeah. So cool. So cool. I was on a mission uh, to go and see all the, t like as many, track down as many Tuckers as I That'd could. And then I got lucky, they were a marquee at the, um, they were a mark at the um, Concourse d'Elegance. I saw 18 in one day. I lost, wow. I, lo I literally lost my pennies. I went nuts. <laughs> what do we have under here? Cool. We have to keep a lot of this covered up because the cats get them. Oh, have, have I know. Cats. Literally, we have a cat problem too. The cat, yeah. Oh, I, like I get it. All right. Oh man, Don, awesome. Does it? Oh wow. That's cool. <laughs> that is cool. Awesome. guys I should have brought my gimbal because you can probably the, the phone's probably moving with every step and my buddy Zach actually gave me a gimbal to use but I didn't remember to pack it so let's continue to enjoy it hopefully you don't get a little bit seasick
All right, guys, so this is pretty darn cool. This was a early mobile library. You know, when you think about it, you know, not everybody lived in city centers. There were more citizens involved in agriculture, and so these library, there were also buses, vans, but their library trucks went out and took, I'm allowed to do this. Don already said I'm allowed to go over the lines, and I'm also very careful with other people's cars, so that's a no-brainer. But these, this would go out to area, like rural areas, and allow a library to come to their citizens. Oh man, I'm an avid reader. I've been an avid reader since I was a little girl. Um, that's why I'm so weird, probably. Just kidding. But this just means a lot to me. I think that's that's fantastic. And the Antique Automobile Club of America are the ones that have this on loan to the museum here. It's really nice of them. They're gonna come pick it up and put something new in soon. But uh, they did a fantastic job on the restoration of this. Like, <laughs> it probably looks better than when it came out of the factory originally. guys I hope you had fun because I think you know I did I really did I freaking love it car museums are my jam they're my thing they're my they are my lifeblood now if you uh, want to check out a cool car museum you should definitely stop by the Virginia Museum of Transportation really nice people there very welcoming and you will not be disappointed with the collection of cars that you have to see as you can tell so Go out and support your car museums.